What is up, everybody? Escape211 here. Uh, sorry, I've been away for a little bit. Just had a lot of stuff going on for family holidays. Hope you've all been doing good as well. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to get back into this gear hub stuff, right? I, I also wanted it to sit a little bit for people to experience it. I know the knee-jerk reaction for change is always tough. And there is a lot in here that seems either overwhelming, confusing, and just plain not good. And I can understand that. So I want to talk about some of the things that I've been hearing the most from people so that we can kind of, you know, get a whole situation on this gear hub thing and what they're trying to do with it. All right. Um, so uh, first of all, let's open the gear hub because there's a lot of people that depending on how long you've been playing this game, you will possibly sit wherever you could be on the gear hub. And some of you might even have some end game stuff. Now, this is the question like I, I'm basically going to go over the questions I regularly hear about this. Uh, and the first question I hear is that like, hey, I have top end stuff, but I'm only on like a low tier, tier four or whatever. And if I upgrade my, you know, whatever, this epic thing or this legendary thing, I'm not moving anywhere. What gives? Like they don't really understand the system, which I totally get. All right. Um, the way the gear hub system works is that to move up in each of the tiers, you have to get or upgrade the items in that tier. All right. So for example, I'm in tier five right here and uh, it shows that I need seven more stars to get to the next tier. Um, so I can only do that by getting the max in the tier that I'm currently. Now, if I have like, let's say Eclipse, I already have, right? So I have this Eclipse. If I were to star up my Eclipse, it is not going to help me for the current tier, which is tier five that I'm on. I have to get or upgrade items in tier five, whatever tier you're on. So, um, for this, I would need to either like get Aegis or Cheetah or some other weapons, or I'd need to upgrade my Redeemer or my Zephyr. If I do upgrade Eclipse, because he's obviously something that I want to use end game, that's still going to help me later on. Because when I do get to tier 7, it will add up the stars of items that I already have unlocked and ranked up. And it will put those forward to the amount that I need for unlocking the next tier. All right. So there is value in upgrading the stuff that you know you're going to want to use and keep end game. It just won't help you with the tier right now. All right. So that obviously is an annoying thing, but also makes a lot of sense. All right, especially for the progression of somebody who's new. Obviously, for many of us, we've been in this game a while, so we're going to have some growing pains to deal with the gear hub and kind of have to backtrack a little to like make up ground to get to where we want to be. I know it's a pain, but once you unlock all those tiers, they will stay unlocked. So we kind of have a little bit of backtracking to do, of course. All right. Um, some other people will say, uh, you know, related to that idea is that everything's too expensive, right? Now, now instead of focusing on the things I want to, like in my case, I want to focus on my Eclipse because I'm actually going to use that end game. I'm forced to focus on other stuff in my tier. Now, I, I don't really have a desire to get Cheetah, but, you know, some will feel like they have to get Cheetah or something else they're not going to need or want. And of course, as you get up in tiers, especially where I am tier five and higher, Everything's expensive. Just about everything is acorns. So you have to waste resources on junk you don't need. This was actually my first initial complaint with the Gear Hub when they first talked about it coming out. I was already thinking that this was going to be a problem. And it is. It is an annoying thing to deal with. However, there are potentially new ways to get acorns that are going to help us realistically move forward with this kind of stuff. All right. Um, I actually have an image I'll put up. Now, this was uh, the dailies that I saw on one of my alt accounts when the gear hub first dropped or actually when the update in the app store dropped before the gear hub went live. Now, I don't know if this was accidental, but you can see a couple uh, different new dailies in there, specifically two that give A coins. All right. One just for getting gold medals and the other one for winning games. Really easy to do. And as a result, you would get 75 A coins. Now, for a lot of you, you didn't see that. And actually, when I look at all my alt accounts, like this one had one of them, I think. And if I go to my dailies now, it is no longer there, right? It's just the basic core dailies. Because when this first happened to me and happened to some of us as the content creators, we talked to the developers and said, like, what's the deal with this? Uh, you know, why, why is this happening for some, not for others? Does everybody see this? Why not? And they said, you know, we realize this is an issue and we are looking into it. So they are definitely aware of this. Now, right now I'm assuming they turned it off for everybody so that it's fair, but I believe they probably want to bring that back. 
Now it's hard for me to say though, because I really don't know what their intent is with this. Maybe this is an item or dailies that came out sooner than they wanted. Maybe that's gonna come out with modifiers or maybe it's gonna be for something else. Um, but you know, right now it is turned off. So hopefully that will be something they turn back on because I will tell you without having this item and the fact that we lost the Vault Blitz uh, 400 eight coins that we had that's going to be difficult for people to do it's not impossible but it's definitely going to make it really difficult to go through the gear hub especially when you got to get all these extra items that cost extra eight coins that frankly we're not getting better ways to get more um but if these two items do come back in and these dailies are here, that is a massive win because actually with even just one of those dailies, uh, either the 50 acoins or the 25 one, um, you would have more acoins getting from that in three weeks time, which is like the cycle for what Vault Blitz used to be, than the 400 acoins that you would get from the event. So, and it's also coming in like slowly one by one. You don't have to wait every three weeks for a new Vault Blitz to drop for that to happen. So when those do come back, and I really hope they do, uh, you know, and it actually all pans out that way, then yeah, I, I would be fine in that mind with losing Vault Blitz because then I know that we're gonna get something way better and actually a lot more. Even just the 25 acoins uh, over the course of three weeks, you would get 525 acoins if you do the dailies for that. Um, over top of the 400 that you would get in three weeks. So if you had that plus the 51 that was on there, you're getting 75 more. I mean, you're getting way more. So the potential is there to have a higher influx of A coins to be able to compensate some for some of these random items that you need to get, even the cheaper ones, just to help you progress. All right. So uh, hopefully that kind of stuff comes back, but I just want to update you guys on where they are with it. Um, similar to that, we have the achievements, all right? The Gear Hub achievements. Now, a lot of people have seen these and had the same kind of thought or experience where it's just like, this looks really cool. Nice to get some extra implants. Some of them are decent, like the one I'm on for five right now. This uh, damage one is pretty nice. I think this one too is like a duration one. These are really useful ones. Um, this, they even have some legendary ones and some of the later ones also have some other legendary ones like uh, a, I think it's a reload implant for um, the rail guns, which is a really good implant, uh, especially to give a legendary for free. This cooldown one is also really nice in chapter three, but the problem with these kind of things is that these are not necessarily easy to complete once you've already been playing the game for a long time. Like just look at tier one. I have to use a tier one mech five times. I have to complete five achievements with Paragon. That's kind of ridiculous when you are further along in the game or if you've upgraded a paragon and you're trying to use it in a current day or like nearly higher end max hanger that's pretty ridiculous for a lot of us some other stuff too is like complete some achievements or obtain look at this one that says obtain tier two weapons or tier two mechs i've already got everything in this tier like this is literally impossible for me to complete so what gives why is this not working and why do we not benefit from this now again this is something that i talked to the developers about they realize that this is not working as it's intended the developers are looking into it all right so they are aware of this kind of stuff and uh, i said you know to them obviously this stuff should be retroactive so i'm assuming that's the uh play that they're gonna make so once that actually is squared away Hopefully all this is retroactive and we'll be able to get all these items that we should already like be able to log in and automatically get because a lot of us have done all of this stuff for all these different gear hub uh, achievements or chapters already. All right. So uh, that's another thing. All right. So I, I do think that obviously we have some bumps here of different things that don't seem to be working properly, like some kind of bugs, but that's to be expected. You are you have to realize, too, the progress path has been in this game since beta. So to take something that different and change it over the course of time as code has changed, as devices has changed, as app markets have changed, all of that, like code changes over time. So when they try to make this big of an overhaul of something that's been fundamental to their game, there's probably gonna be some errors, some bugs, some issues, that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, that's okay to me as long as it's something that they're working on. So it sounds like they are, that makes me feel a lot better. Uh, I hope it does for you guys too. Uh, but it just means, yeah, how long is it going to be until we get that? I have no idea. I have no idea how long that, that it's going to take for that stuff. So hopefully sooner rather than later. But that's something I'm going to try to keep on them for to, so that we can hopefully get some answers to this kind of stuff. All right. Um, the other thing that people asked about is uh, the idea of money, right? Um, how should you spend your money now 
that we have the gear hub because if you go in the shop and you go to the neon shop especially you always have these offers and some people who do buy do spend have even asked me like hey now that the gear hub is here should i buy stuff in here and actually it's it it kind of comes and goes it depends on you right there's obviously instances of things that it won't be worth it like for instance the chain gun six on mine right now totally worthless i'm already past that tier doesn't make sense for me to get um you know and if i were to get it on the gear hub I'd be getting it for only eight coins. I wouldn't spend money and I would get it at way higher a star rating. Same kind of thing for some of these, in my opinion. So like Missile Rack 16, Helix Rack 16, even though I don't have that access right now, if I go to my gear hub, it's two tiers away. Um, it even highlights them just to show you. So like there's there's the Missile Rack. Where's the uh, Helix? I don't know where the Helix is on mine. Oh, okay, there it is. All right, so those are actually two tiers away from me. So I could get those now, but think about it. I mean, if I got those now at both two stars, it would be nice to have right away, but am I realistically going to have enough resources while I'm trying to work up the gear hub to also save to star those up two more times and spend all those eight coins on that, um, as well as credits and other kind of stuff, all right? Not realistic, uh, at least not in my opinion. But if it was something where you were much earlier in the game and you're able to get like an EM rifle or something like that that's much later, that you're gonna have a lot more time to build up the blueprints or star up if it's something that you wanna keep, that seems a little more reasonable to me. So to me, it's just like how much time you think it's going to take you to realistically star something up to where it would be on the gear hub versus buying it early and how much extra advantage it's gonna give you now. So um, hopefully that helps to kind of like give you a thought process for when you wanna actually buy stuff here in the neon shop, all right? Um, because, you know, that's another thing I feel like. I, I feel like they're probably gonna be losing money on some of these little deals and they're gonna have to try and make it up some other way. I don't exactly know what their goal or intent is for that. I don't know if that's what the whole implant discount debacle and all that is related to, or if it's gonna be modifiers or something else. That I have no idea of, but it does seem like they're trying to make certain things more accessible, which to me is always a good thing. And, and speaking of that idea of accessible, um, you can kind of see already, when I went to the Gear Hub, there are obviously going to be things in here that you cannot buy directly. Because when we first heard of this, we thought we would be able to buy everything, right? So if I go into weapons, you'll see right away that I have fusion cannons in here that I can't actually get right away. If you look at my pulse cannon six and eight, I have those. But then when I look at the fusion cannon, if I tap on that, I have to spend 36 bucks to get this. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous, right? I thought the whole gear hub point was for everything to be available. The whole point of the gear hub in my mind was to make a lot of things in the past available that we weren't able to on the progress path and have a system for when things become available for in-game currency and how that system is gonna be deployed, right? So it shows you right now where they're gonna be on the gear hub, what you're gonna have to make sure that you have open so that when it is available for in-game currency, you can get it. Uh, and then you have to wait for it to come out. Now that's the difficulty with all of this, all right? so. Um, to a certain degree, that's very frustrating because we thought now that we have the gear hub, we all have a way to get everything. But at the same time, you have to think of it like this. When new items come out, that's the way they get their most revenue, uh, typically. And they have to make sure those things have some value for those who are spending their money. If the person could just buy it for in-game currency on the gear hub immediately, there's no reason for them to spend on event crate rushes, on buys for $35, on even the neon shop, right? Because you're gonna be able to get it on the gear hub at its natural star rating right away. So they do have to have a period of time where it's only available for certain events or in or, or uh, real money to make sure that, um, that that item is still considered a chase item or have a value item as a brand new item. Uh, I don't know what that window is. That's the difficulty of all this. And it probably varies per weapon um, for how effective it is or, or how much people spend. Maybe they look at the data to know if it's like, oh, this can stay as, you know, for value for money for only three months versus five months. I have no idea. Either way, I do feel like their timeline for that is way too long. So if we look at something like the, um, uh, the fragment guns, all right? The fragment guns are a rare item. They're already eclipsed by the ember gum that just came out. I do not understand why this one isn't available for in-game currency already. Same thing for Eclipse. Even though Eclipse is obviously an epic, I mean, a, a legendary. Uh, sorry, I was on the wrong one. Even though he's a legendary, I've heard from a lot of people. I was fortunate enough to win it in an event on this account. But I've heard from people that um, this is still only available for money, which I understand how uh, how high level or top tier Eclipse is, but it's been in the game for a long time. 
So I do wonder where that window is supposed to be and I hope that we can see that close a little bit. All right, even if we just say three months, three months is still a long time for someone to have access to it by themselves only and free to play cannot even touch it yet. Uh, but to extend that to like five or six months is just crazy to me. So I really hope that they change that because we need to have access to some of this stuff much sooner um, as uh, free to play, in my opinion. So, uh, but those are the core things, guys. That's that's the main stuff I feel like, you know, I saw the most questions about that I wanted to talk about. And I already feel like I'm talking too long. Sorry, you probably heard me talk too much. So uh, that's probably enough to say, at least for this video. Um, but, uh, Obviously, if you have other questions, you can leave them below. I am more than willing to answer them. One thing I do want to say, though, um, because a lot of you are still concerned, even in the current state, without having those extra um, achievements or dailies that we would get for the A-Coins, a lot of us are still saying, how in the world am I going to get enough A-Coins and move up this gear hub? Well, I will say that the account that I'm on right now is my alt account that I started when the gear hub first came out for some accounts. So I started a fresh account. It's a free-to-play account, and I have been able to get to tier five and have some pretty decent stuff for my hanger. I'm actually almost done with tier five. I'm going to be getting Aegis and then one other item and then I'll be on tier six which is the the tier right before you get into all the legendary goodies all right and I've only been playing this account for about three months so when you think about that from the perspective of my progress or what my progress has been as a free-to-play player on a brand new account using the gear hub it has only taken me about three months to get in a reasonable spot where I can get some of the decent stuff that many of us want all right obviously I'm gonna have more time than I'm gonna need I'm guessing within six months I will probably be in tier like seven or eight and starting to look at some of the legendary end game stuff I want. And again, that seems way faster than before. But if you are curious about my journey through that or for that, I have a couple series that I will put at the end of this video and link below. One is just taking you through the different stages of each of the gear hub to give you a guide to know which items to buy and what's worth your time, uh, as well as like an idea of how much all that costs. And then another series where I'm just doing like, you know, some matches on this free to play account so that you can see my journey as a free-to-play player through the gear hub for these last few months. So uh, I hope that gives you an idea of like, you know, maybe some stuff that'll help you in progressing with the gear hub the way it is, as well as answer some of your questions. Obviously you probably have more and I'm sure you all have mixed emotions. So anything you want to comment below with, feel free to any other questions you have, bring those as well. All right, but as always, we will see you out there on the battlefield.